Hello, my name's Ovi James. I hope you're well. I hope your teams are well and I hope business is doing as well as possible given the times that we're all navigating. Today I want to say a little bit about endings. I've been speaking to a number of leaders in recent weeks about endings and change and what I'm finding is a rush to finding new ways of doing things and implementing new ways of doing things without enough attention being given to how things have worked to date within various organizations. And I want to talk about this specifically because there can be a negative impact when there's too much of a rush to implement in new ways and processes and culture within organizations without enough time being dedicated to reflect on where you've come from and what worked in the past and who worked how in the past, who would be impacted by decisions and changes that you make, amongst other considerations that we really do need time to explore before we can move forward. Most importantly, it is important to dedicate some space and time to grieve and mourn the old ways of doing things, the dreams of the past and the vision that you may have had based on how things worked in the past. So a number of tips for you today. First of all, if you're a leader and you're working with your team on a change or looking at a new way of doing things, a new process, a new system, perhaps changing things significantly within your organizational culture, take some time to think about what do you need to say goodbye to? Have you dedicated enough time for you and your team to spend some time and reflect on what's worked for you in the past, how you've worked together in the past, what you're saying goodbye to and what you're going to miss. If you haven't done that, it's really important to create that space with your team because what could happen when that's not done is that the grieving process, the letting go process can move way beyond a period of time that is normal and it might affect how your implementation of new ways of working goes. So take some time to create the space for you and your team to talk about what worked in the past, how did the old ways serve you and what would you miss about it. Secondly, have a devil's advocate in your team. Appoint someone in that session to play devil's advocate. Ask them to challenge you and tell you all the reasons why this new change would not work. It's, it sounds like a really strange thing to do, but what I find with teams is that when we go through this process and we do it in a really effective way, we pull out lots of different potential risks and are able, as a result, to create a much stronger risk mitigation plan, which really does come in handy down the line when the teething problems essentially start to arise. So think about whether you've considered all the risks of the new ways of doing things or the new change that you're implementing and get someone to play the role of devil's advocate. Do it in a light way, but make sure you surface any concerns or issues that anyone might have about this change. Which leads me to the third tip. Create the space and make sure that your team have trust in one another and in your relationship because what happens in your relationship as a leader with your team and the relationships between your team members is that if it's not strong enough if you don't have the trust in that relationship you will find that you don't challenge one another enough and you will find that issues and concerns and reservations about the new changes you might be thinking about or you might be implementing will get brushed under the carpet and people would not feel that they're able to surface and share those concerns and have them addressed so that you move together in a much stronger way, much more aligned as a team in terms of where you're going. What I find in a lot of team development uh, sessions that I run with leadership teams is that decision making often comes up as one of the challenges. People make decisions and then it takes six months, less than that, even 12 months, and decisions that were supposed to be long-term end up changed within months. And that can have a knock-on effect on the team morale. So if you find that you're making a lot of decisions that don't go anywhere, 
ask yourself whether you're challenging one another enough and think about how you need to develop your team further so you can challenge one another better without fear of damaging the relationships in the team. If you have any issues in, in terms of how to address this, if you need some support in terms of working with change that is about to happen or change that is already in the process or change that hasn't gone well, you know where to find me. I'm more than happy to help. I'm on ob at objames.com. Take care of yourselves and enjoy being together as a team.